Are you team New Year's resolutions? Or maybe you're more of like a pick a theme word kind of girl. Or perhaps New Year's January 1 is just another date on the calendar for you. Regardless of what camp you fall into, this is the time of year when goal setting takes center stage. And in today's video, I want to talk about how I set goals according to a study by Franklin Covey, time management experts. Four out of five people that make New Year's resolutions never actually complete them. They give up on them. In fact, a third won't even make it until the end of January. So instead of setting resolutions, a good question to ask yourself is who do you want to be in 2023? And hey, that rhymes. How cool is that? Today, I want to share my process for achieving goals. Goal setting isn't something you visit just while you watch the ball drop. So let's get into this. Let's start with looking at the difference between a resolution and a goal. So if you look up in the dictionary, the definition of a resolution, I did this, it says a firm decision to do or not to do something, a firm decision. I want to highlight that part. This seems really rigid and not a lot of space for wiggle room. And I would propose that's the fact why many people fail because it's so firm. It's so set in stone. It's a resolution. It's a firm decision. And a goal, dictionary de definition of a goal is the object of a person's ambition or effort, an aim or desired result. I don't know about you, but that feels a whole hell of a lot better, right? It's a goal. It's an ambition. It's a way to direct your efforts. There's room to fall flat on your face. There's room to recognize obstacles and figure out ways around them, right? Because you're just working towards a desired result. So hopefully that gives you more clarity on why resolutions really don't work all that well and goal setting and uh, achieving goals it is much more realistic. So next, I want to introduce you to the idea of the roadmap for life. But before I do that, I want to tell you guys about a process that is instrumental in how I make it through my days and make sure that I'm always staying on the top of my goals. And that is the reset routine. I will put a link to the reset routine below. Um, and I will show in that link, it shows you completely how to execute this, but it is the most productive 10 minutes of my day. You guys, I set it at the end of each day. It gives me a checkpoint to see what I got done for today. It also allows me to set intentions of how I'm going to relax and restore and recharge and spend my evening, but also sets me up for tomorrow. So don't miss that link. Check it out down below. It starts by taking a 30,000 foot view of what your life looks like. So imagine getting into, you know, that hot air balloon and riding all the way up to the top and looking at all of the parts. Often when we're setting New Year's resolutions, we're only looking at, I'll use the most common one, I want to lose 10 pounds. And how many times have you made the exact same resolution and failed only to set it again, you know, the next year? So the roadmap for life looks at your health, but it also looks at your business. It also looks at your relationships. It also looks at your other fitness, your mental fitness. It looks at your financial status, all of the things, all of the places that you want to be in your life. And it sets goals for all of those areas and whatever you may find most important for 2023, that'll be your focus. No more than nine at the very high end 12, but you're not going to be doing them all at once. Okay, the reason I like taking the 30,000 foot view of life approach has to do with 
a book by Bonnie Ware. It's The Five Top Regrets of the Dying. And this was a hospice worker that spent a lot of time with people in their you know, last final moments of life. And what they discussed was their biggest regrets in life. So she, she saw all kinds of people. And um, I know it's kind of morbid, but the idea of reverse engineering your life and living into what you want it to be at the end just makes sense to me. So let me read to you what the five top regrets of the dying are. The first is, I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself. Next, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. I wish that I had let myself be happier And I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. So we need to set goals for more than just our health, right? Our health is going to let us live longer and and be more happy um, because we're going to feel better. But it's not going to necessarily make better friendships or allow you to better express, express your emotions. So by doing this roadmap for life, we do the big vision, that 30,000 foot view of what you want your life to look like. And then we chunk it down into yearly goals, into quarterly goals, and then into weekly goals that you are taking daily actions on. I have a whole blog post on how to write a life plan and I actually get in there and do it with you in the Life After Busy Bootcamp. So I'll link both of those below as well. So next, in talking about how to design your life and my process for achieving goals, I want you to ask what's your objective? So let's take, let's go back to our health health goal of losing 10 pounds. Goals fall into two two categories, either achievement or habit goals. And your approach to how you're going to achieve that goal is completely different. So I want to lose 10 pounds is an achievement goal. But the way you work towards that might be a habit. Maybe you want to create a daily exercise habit. I'm going to work out 30 times a day. That is a habit. But achieving, I'm going to lose 10 pounds, is an achievement goal. So let me give you some more details on the difference. So hopefully this makes it a little bit clearer for you. Achievement goals are focused on one-time accomplishments and often best managed, especially when it comes to like a, a large business project or a large personal project, using a project management tool. It can be something like launching your website. Planning your family's summer vacation. There's a lot of moving parts to that, right? Or running a half marathon. There's a lot of little bits that go into running a half marathon. Habit goals are for achieving an ongoing activity or creating a new habit in your life. And there's a different approach for creating a good habit versus stopping a bad habit. But let me give you an idea of of some habits. So exercising five days a week. We just talked about that. Um, messaging five new prospects each day, or scheduling a weekly family game night. Those are different sorts of habits that, that touch different areas that might be important to your life. I talk about how to track habits. So habit tracking is something that's very important when you're cr- trying to create a new behavior. And I will link to a blog post that gets into Um, some thoughts around habit tracking. Okay, so we talked about the difference between a resolution and a goal. We talked about the roadmap for life and how to take that 30,000 foot view. We talked about your objectives and the different types of goals, achievement versus habit. Now, when trying to design your dream life, something we all run into is dread and the struggle with consistency. Okay, first let's deal with the concept of dread. So many of us have these big goals, but actually like taking steps to achieving them, maybe like launching a website, we dread the work that we're gonna have to put into. 
it is something scary that you have never done before. So that's why you never actually get started. So how to start achieving that goal is just take the very first tiny little step. And when you take that scary first step, you'll feel nervous, yes but you'll get a little bit more clarity. And then you continue to just take those tiny steps, tiny steps, tiny steps. And we can get into a further discussion on how to identify what those tiny steps are in another episode. And then struggling with consistency. My top tip here, when you're struggling to be consistent, whether it be a habit or an achievement goal, actually showing up and doing the work is each day when you hit up against that obstacle, identify what it is so that when you sit down and do that reset routine I mentioned before, you can reflect on how you can get over that obstacle. So let me give you an example to make this more clear. Actually, a video I'm gonna record today, I was supposed to record yesterday, and when I was time blocking my day, I wrote down, Um, the name of the talk that I was going to be working on. And I didn't realize that in the morning when I kind of did the quick quick glance through of what was on my calendar for that particular day, I realized that I was actually recording and I hadn't gotten dressed in like hair and makeup and all of that to record a video that I was going to be giving to um, part of a summit. So I put it off. But if I would have just been more clear in writing what that specific task was for today, I could have been better prepared and actually been able to check that thing off my list. So that's what I mean. When you struggle to be consistent, be really clear on what's getting in the way of you showing up so that, you know, in my example, I could write a more clear task and be ready and have all the tools that I need to accomplish that task when the time comes. Okay. So I just want to wrap this up with how to achieve your goals for 2023, make sure you're not taking on too much. No more than nine, and I said at the very hour limit, 12 for the entire year, the less, the better. And I break those down into a quarter and then no more than two to three goals per quarter is how I like to approach it. And I get into all of that in the um, Roadmap for Life workshop. So I, if you're struggling though to prioritize which goal is more important than another, so which goal are you going to focus on for this year, I have a video for that. So um, I will see you over there in that video. Thanks so much for listening. Make sure to subscribe. And I'm taking off next week, but I'll be here the week after that. Um, enjoy your holiday season. Goodbye for now, everybody.